Welcome everyone to our service of the day. Um, those who are joining us online, uh, we always enjoy having you as part of our uh, congregation. Uh, we have several things, again, like I said, lots of things going on. Um, and just one last time, I'm going to pass around uh, the clipboard. Uh, if you would be willing to help us with some snacks for uh, Wednesday night uh, for the community concert. I hope all of you got that on your calendar and are planning to be here. Um, bring your neighbor, bring a friend. Uh, I think we have uh, a good lineup of music for that day. Also, uh, we're trying to get everybody's signature on a piece of paper so that we can add that to the Christmas cards that we send out to those who are maybe not around here. Uh, and so uh, as that comes around, if you'll just sign your name and your um, family's uh, names on there so that uh, we can send those Christmas cards out, that would be great. And then, of course, as always, we uh, continue to uh, need people who will be greeters um, and doing scripture and stuff, so um, please take a look at that. Next week is uh, the Come Home for Christmas uh, and plan uh, to stay for uh, the meal that's being catered in uh, so that we can have a time of fellowship also. Um, if you uh, had an angel that you took home from the angel tree, hopefully you brought your stuff today. Uh, they wanted those in by today sometime. So um, if you didn't bring it, um, try to get it to the Baptist church um, or bring it to me. I'm going to take the packages that are here uh, today and get them on to uh, Katie Lee um, so that they can prepare the... Um, angel tree um, present. So uh, please be sure that if you have one of those at home yet that you get your uh, gifts up here for them to, to send out to others. Anybody have any other announcements that you can think of? We have the out there, um, there's the cart that has the little boxes uh, that you can help to give a blessing to uh, those that we have here at the church that work at the church. And then the blue, tall blue one is where you can put your donation ahead of time for the covered dinner if you wanted to do that. So we have several things that you need to do and can do and can be a part of. Anything, anybody have anything else this morning? Church conference today. If you would like to ride together, if you want to be here at the church about 5, 15, 5, 20, uh, then uh, maybe they can, uh, you know, you can ride together. Um, so it, that would be great. We need a few of you to be there um, because that is our annual church conference. And so um, please consider uh, taking a little bit of time out this evening. And I know Pastor's going, and I know that Rod's going. I know there's a few going, but um, some few of us are staying behind to practice for bells <laughs> for Wednesday night. So anybody have anything else? Okay, let's together our vision. We grow in Christ to empower our service to others. And our mission is to know Christ and make Christ known. One of the, part of the scripture that, we, that they'll be reading today out of Matthew 3, and I thought it's just a good reminder as we come together into worship. It says, prepare yourself for the Lord's coming and level the straight path into your heart. Uh, open your hearts and clear your minds so that you can prepare uh, for the Lord uh, during our worship time today. Let's all stand and share the peace, and then we'll come back together when the music starts. Are we practicing? What time are we practicing today?
The scripture reading is from Mark chapter 1, verse 4. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of his sins. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ the way. May the word of God, may the word sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation. O oh, oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Sisters and brothers, come and let us worship our God together. Let's stand as we join together and bless be the God of Israel. Blessed be the God of Israel who comes to set us free, who visits and redeems us and grants us liberty. The prophets spoke of mercy, of freedom and release. God shall fulfill the promise to bring our people peace. Now from the house of David a child of grace is given. Our Savior comes among us to raise us up to heaven. Before him goes the herald for runner in the way. The prophet of salvation, the harbinger of day. On prisoners of darkness, the sun begins to rise. The dawning of forgiveness upon the sinner's eyes. To guide the feet of pilgrims along the path of peace. Oh, bless our God and Savior with songs that never cease. Let's pray together a covenant prayer in the Wesleyan tradition. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me. Put me to do. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee, or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee, or brought low by thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Let's offer our offering and ourselves with gratitude and joy. And thank you 
for your generous giving and ongoing support, support for this body. I'll just come forward to collect the offering. Today's morning offering will be received now. Keep standing, let's confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. It's a time for young disciples. Would you come for it? Wait for Jade. Go. So, are you? Is this on? Okay. So, are you guys all ready for Christmas? Do you have your Christmas tree up and the house decorated? Nope. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I do have my tree up, but yeah. You know. So, we. This is a season of Advent, which means we prepare for Christmas, right? coming of the birth of Jesus and <clears throat> we, those are things that we do to prepare for Christmas like put our tree up and decorate the house and maybe make plans whether we're gonna go to grandma's house or grandma's coming to our house or things like that now that usually takes us maybe a month if you have got a real organized mother she may have already had everything planned out but did you realize that God had a plan to prepare the whole world for the birth of baby Jesus? Do you think it took a month for him to do that? 
No, he started at the beginning of time planning out that one day he'd send his son to save the whole world, wouldn't he? And that plan included prophets like Isaiah that Pastor Chu is going to be talking about later. Does anybody know what a prophet is? Jawan. message about Jesus. Right. A person that tells others a message about Jesus. Right. And so he told Isaiah told people many amazing things about Jesus. Like that he would come from the family of Jesse. Has anybody ever heard of Jesse? No. You're right. He's the father of David. So have you heard of David? He was the one that killed How'd he do that? What do he use? A slingshot, right. Mm -hmm. But this was even before da uh, David was born, even long before Jesse was born, and long, long before Jesus was born. It was like 700 years before the birth of Jesus that Isaiah was telling about Jesus. So, And maybe one of the most amazing things that Isaiah said was that the that a child will lead everything to change. His words are, the wolf will lie with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with a goat. Wait a minute. Doesn't a, a wolf and a leopard usually try to eat lambs and goats? Yeah, they're kind of enemies from each other. But when, the, when God comes, when Jesus comes again, everything will change. So, Eventually, Jesus, when Jesus comes a second time, he will bring peace on earth. And, and so remember, during the season of Advent, you and I are celebrating the coming of Christ and the, into the world and look forward to his promise that he will come again. As the prophet Isaiah tells us, Jesus brings peace into our world and he wants you and me to live in peace with each other. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today we ask you to help us to live in peace with one another. We praise you as we celebrate the coming of our Savior, the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There you go. Come on, Thank you, Carol. Thank you, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming and thank you for doing our virtual service. If you have anything you want to share with us today, please share with us. I just want to thank the Lord for Thomas and his skills. And all in all, the pianist as they come up and share with us and because there's just something about music, isn't it? It lifts our spirit, lifts our heart. I think it's part of God's plan. We're musical. And when the song that you started out with really touched me because all of a sudden my little video camera um, memory system clicked in to 53 years ago. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night, getting out, walking in the hall in a dorm as a junior in college. It was dark and the windows were high. As I looked out to the southeast there sat this big tree on a hill that was decorated. It's look kind of like the White House one. And somehow that symbol said there is hope in darkness. And it was that light on those Christmas trees, beautiful, and I still can picture that in my mind. It would only be a few weeks, I'd be walking down the street, just pondering all of the knowledge that I had been had stuffed into my head and realized there wasn't a lot of heart knowledge. 
It was missing. And my heart was longing. And I came to the edge of the street, a four-way stop, and I looked south, and there was that tree, and there was the little Methodist church right next to it. And it's like a little voice inside of me spoke to me and said, your answer is there. Just a few weeks later, this old agnostic, atheistic person found himself at church for the first time. And then God spoke to me in that very first service and said, do what your heart is telling you to do. And then the, the pastor had just shared about the love that God had shown through his son and that we needed that not in our head, but in our heart. And that's how the way he put it. And that just really hit me. And so you can imagine Old farm boy, ranch boy, raised the way I was, found myself at the altar. And the rest is history. And I'm so thankful for that. And I'm thankful for songs and, you know, the value of it and your ministry, how you reach out. That's part of us growing and all. And I guess my prayer today is that as a church, we need to pray that this Christmas will be filled with those things for many people that they see the light they see what that really represents and they're drawn to the church and ladies and gentlemen it's happening it's beginning to happen if you follow some things that are going on it's happening it's beginning to move I just read a recent report where and it's not just in the United States. We need some purging. That's been doing now that things are, the Holy Spirit's really beginning to move. All right, and touch people's heart, open things up to purify and separate. But I just read where in Mongolia, there was at least 3,000 converts here just within the past couple of months. The Lord is on the move. I hope and I know we all want to be in the middle of it. And we all know it starts in our own hearts and being willing to walk where we've never walked before. First at the altar. So last week, Morgan and Maverick were here for the whole weekend. We had a wonderful visit with them, and then they went home on Monday, and Morgan came down with shingles. <laughs> so she's had a very miserable week this week, and um, she's wanted me to make sure to tell all of you she strongly encourages the vaccine if you have any susceptibility to uh, shingles or like the chicken pox strain. So anyway, be praying for her. Um, report on my mom she's doing great the healing is it has been phenomenal in her leg so they will begin radiation uh we think a week from monday so the 12th um so continue to pray for that it'll be for five weeks and um so we'll need lots of of healing and strength for her for those five weeks um and aside from that i think just pray for everyone there's a lot of people traveling um in the next week or two that I know of, and so just pray for safe travels. Thank you. In just a few days, December 13th, my daughter-in-law and her husband, my son Christopher, are having their first baby. So I am pretty excited, Grandma, but I'm also a little bit concerned. She is a high-risk pregnancy because of all the things she's been through. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. She'll be going to Kansas City to have this baby on the 13th. Okay, I've got a list. First off, pray for my wife because she, I guess you'd call it a cold sick. Pray for Luke because he's been fighting it for a couple of weeks. Um, his mom, Roberta, middle of the night a couple of nights ago fell in her house 
no broken bones, but they said uh, oh, scraped up her elbow real bad, her knee real bad, bruised up her head real bad, so that's a concern. Uh, in a real positive note, I don't know if any of you watched, but the K-State had a real good football game yesterday, so. <laughs> but it was a good football game. It was good on both sides, so. And then Megan and Lance, they were at the game, and they're going to be traveling today in Emerson and Addison, so pray for them. Football game in December, really? Pardon? A football game in December, really, in winter. Oh, yeah. Really? you got a whole another month, month's worth of college football by the time you get to New Year's. Really? Kind of leading up to New Year's and New Year's Day. In this cold winter? Yeah, yeah, that one was in the dome. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay. It, it'll go on for what seems an eternity. Okay. Everlasting. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for enlightening me. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you, Rick. I have a few praises. First of all, we had a fire on our one of our fields a few days ago, and I'm very thankful and praise uh, for the fire department and and the police department and the and the tele or the electrical company for coming out. And Roger, he comes swing by, make sure everything goes okay, okay. And then we have Jace with us here today. Jace Banta is McKinsey, one of our regulars, her brother. So he stayed with us last night. So praise him. And then, if you don't mind, I'd like to read a little story we learned in um, Bible study today in Bible school. Um, in 1835, the Bible Society, okay. Uh, da, 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 there was a 12-year-old girl, um, It's her name was Tori. In 1835, the Bible Society published 100 copies of the Gospel of Luke in Marori, and we still have copies of that, of course. And in 1836, missionaries gave one of these to a young Marori girl named Tori, Tori at a mission school near Matamata, and she read it to her father, the chief of the Waikato tribe, and were on the Kaito River, and as we re record here, she kept her treasured copy of this Gospel of Luke under her pillow when she slept. Well, under the threat of a neighboring warring Rotoro tribe, the mission school was in the process of relocating to Tarragona. And in October 19th of 1836, at the Rory Falls, a raiding party killed the 12 year old girl and took the treasured object from under her pillow. Later, unable to read the Rotoro chief discarded it until a slave boy who had learned to read revealed its contents to the fascinated listeners. The chief was convicted by the contents of the Gospel of Luke and resolved to become a Christian. The Rotora chief resolved to seek out the father of the mur murdered girl and beg for her forgiveness, for his forgiveness. And when finally confronting the father of the chief of the Wakanda tribe and risking the customary tribal response of revenge, the father of the murdered girl forgave him. And thus began a peaceful relationship between the two previously warring tribes. This is a true story and is distributed to school children as part of the Maori heritage. A young girl murdered, a devastated father refusing to seek revenge. <coughs> A murder transformed through the gospel he stole from his victim and then forgiveness given and peace achieved. The story of this young girl, Maori girl and her copy of the gospel of Luke became the key to the conversion of many Maori tribes. And when missionaries visited both the North and the South Islands, they discovered, discovered that many of the Maori tribes had already converted to Christ due to the story of the Tarori and her copy of the Gospel of Luke making its rounds. Well, on February 16th of 1840, the nation of New Zealand was born, born by the signing of the Treaty of Wakaki with the Maori tribes, while primarily dealing with the land rights and other issues that the foundational document obligates the Crown of the United Kingdom to safeguard and protect the Maori rights of worship, since a significant portion of the Maori tribes have previously been converted to Christianity, the government is legally committed to protect Christianity in New Zealand. What a powerful book to have changed all that in in um, 
tribes and countries and everything. So just the book of Luke. So thank you. What? Oh, and EJ's not feeling good. If we can keep her in our prayers. Thank you, Kinsey. <laughs> Anyone else? I think most of you have received a bit of text about uh, Bonnie Larkin. Uh, she fell last Saturday and had hip surgery Sunday in Hayes, and then she has been moved back to Tribune, uh, you know, in a swing bed. So yeah, that's that's why you got her text. Yeah, her daughter-in-law called me. Uh, Friday and update me about what happened to Bonnie. So please have Bonnie in your prayer. Yeah. For all of our prayers and concerns, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you for sharing this morning. Let's pray together. O oh, merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. O oh God, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. O oh God, we pray for your church throughout the world and for all the ministries that build up the body of Christ, that in our vocations we may serve to your glory. We pray for this nation and for all nations, that the nations will be governed by your will and your justice. We pray for our communities, for our neighbors, and for all in need, for the sick, for the dying, for strangers, for the invisible ones, for the elderly and children, for parents and grandparents, and for those who live alone and those who live lonely in the midst of family. O oh God, guide and strengthen all people in our common life to know the gift of your grace and love. O oh God, hear us. Your mercy is great. May all that we ask and all that you, you see is needed in our world be given to your people. O oh God, we give thanks to you for everything you have given to us and for everything you have done for us. Receive and turn our offering to your good will, and turn us always to you in gratitude. Holy God, by your Holy Spirit, open our ears and minds and hearts, and fill us with your word. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's sing rain song. <coughs> You may just be seated. That's okay. You don't have to stand. Thank you. We'll sing the ring song one time through. Oh Lord, you know we need your rain. So we are praying for your rain. And if it be within your plan, please send your rain upon the land and then if you'll join us in once in royal david city for his bed Mary loving mother mild Jesus Christ her little child he came down to earth from heaven who is God and Lord of all when his shelter was a stable and his cradle was a stall where the poor, the scorn, the lowly, lived on earth our Savior holy. Jesus is our childhood's pattern, 
day by day, like us he grew. He was little, weak, and helpless. Tears and smiles, like us he knew. And he feeleth for our sadness, and he shareth in our gladness. And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. And he leads his children on to the place where he is gone. Um, Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. To the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might of the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equality for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and he will breathe his lips. He shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be belt around his waist and faithfulness, the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The, the, shall, the calf and the lion will feed together, and the little ch child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall ga graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of asp, and the weaned child sh shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of knowledge and of the Lord as water co cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Jude, Matthew 3 through 1, or 3, 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judah, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel hair with leather belt around his waist, and his food with loco locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and Judah and um and all the region around the Jordan were going to, out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when they saw many of phrases and Sadducees coming for, coming for his baptism, he said to them, You, you, you brood of vipers! who warn you to flee from their coming wrath. Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance. And do not pursue to say yourself, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able, to, able from these stones to raise up the children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying in the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that is that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into a fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, 
but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I, and I am not worthy to carry the sandals. He will baptize you the Holy Spirit and fire. This winnowing fork is in his hand and will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into granary, but the chaff will he will burn with unquenchable fire. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. It was really awful to stand before the congregation, before people, and to read anything else. You know, my father is also a pastor. I was a pastor kid. So I, had, I was expected to do anything else at the church when I was a kid. I mean, it is just an assumption that pastor's kids could do anything at the church. So, but you know, no, no it's not. <laughs> No, no, so when I was asked for a time to stand in front of the congregation to read the Bible passages, oh, it was awful, really, really awful, yeah. I still had that memory. Ask Young, I, I am a person who easily forget almost everything, really, but I still have, I still remember that time, yes, it was very awful, so... At that time, I just told myself that, okay, I'm not going to do this kind of thing again. And then, you see, that is what I am doing every Sunday. So, you might just want to be very careful when you wish for. <sighs> Thank you, Dallas. You did a good job today. Thank you. Okay, so, here we are. Water versus oil. Ice versus fire. What do you have? What image do you have in your mind? Do you think they can exist together at the same time? Yeah, of course. Water and oil, they can exist together, but they will not. They will not be mingled with each other, right? And ice and fire. Once I watch a television show, and then at that time, people, they, they just fired on the, on the surface of a frozen lake. I was really surprised that happened, but the ice on the lake was pretty thick, so they were able to make fire on the lake, but I'm not going to try that. Whether that is thick or not, I'm not going to do that. But usually, ice and fire, they cannot co coexist together. How can they live in peace with each other? For instance, a relationship with a brother and sister. I am not talking to you about your family, but I'm talking about my family. My relationship with my sister. Or, or a relationship what I have seen in my family at the parsonage. Oh, they are usually good. Usually, okay? How can they live in peace with each other? The prophet Isaiah today, the scripture we read today, tells us about that kind of relationship. The peaceful kingdom of God, but to me at least, to me, it's almost impossible to have a peace, peaceable relationship with those creatures. The wolf, verses 6 through 9, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. No. The Isaiah is talking about the, a relationship between a prey and a predator. 
right? Basically, dove with the lamb, leopard with the kid, the calf and the lion, the cow and the bear, the lion and the ox. To me, it looks like something wrong. It looks impossible. How can this kind of situation happen in our life? We see our differences are too broad, our divisions are too deep, and our disagreement is too wide. So, can we move forward to a new reality? The prophet Isaiah is telling about that. In verse 1, a shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what he I see or decide, but what his ears, but by his righteousness. So yeah, for common people like me, it's impossible. But it's, it's possible by the Spirit of the Lord. By the Spirit of the Lord. Why our differences draw our attention and our divisions take our central places? The prophet proclaims that God is working something new, something impossible to my eyes. It was hard for the Israelites to think about this kind of a new world because their land, houses, the temple, wars, Everything was destroyed, and they were forced to be in exile. It seemed that they had no hope. So yes, some people, they lost, most of them, they lost their hope. Nevertheless, God didn't give them up on. Through the prophet Isaiah, God declares that he will restore them. He will bring them back home, as we know they were brought back. And God will show them a new life, which they thought that it's impossible. You see, life comes out of death. Restoration comes out of destruction. And hope comes out of despair. A shit comes out of the stump. When we think we are done, it's over. There's nothing new. There's no hope. That moment, God begins his plan, his work. Oh, no, God has already begun his plan. But that moment, we'll see what God is doing. God will give his new life to his people. So to be ready for receiving this new life, John the Baptist in Matthew's Gospel, John the Baptist proclaims in verse 2, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Verse 8, So bear fruit worthy of repentance. When we think of or hear about repentance, repentance, the first thing we might think is our feeling. But repentance is not only about our feeling. When we repent, of course, we feel guilty, we feel sorry, we feel shame. When we repent, however, we go further than our feeling. As we feel guilty, we turn away from our sinful nature toward our God, who made us and who has given us a second chance and who has been waiting for us, coming back to him. Repentance is not only about our emotion, but also about, about our action, as we realize that we are walking on a wrong way. We turn our way and walk in his path. 
We turn our attention to our God. We turn our direction to Him. And we turn our way to our Maker. So, sisters and brothers in Christ, during this Advent season, we learn and we know and we reaffirm that God brings life to us and to the world. God brings hope to each and one of us and to the world. As we long for his coming kingdom, it's time to turn our way from ourselves to our maker. When we think it's over, when we think we cannot find any hope, there is hope in the midst of despair. And there is joy in our brokenness because God brings life out of death. God brings hope out of despair. And God brings restoration out of destruction. Again, a shoot shall come out of, from the stump of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots. And that's going to be a signal to each and one of us. Let's celebrate the Holy Communion together. The Lord be with you. We lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love, your love, and your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through, the, through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts, and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones, and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send empty away. Your, your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Thanks, Julie. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let's pray.
pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them before us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth again. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, I lost a, a sign of shit, so I do not remember who signed up for uh, helping the communion today. Did you sign up, Greg? Okay, Greg. Mitzi, would you help us? And Theron, would you help me? And Carol? This is the Lord's table. This table is open to all. Please come and receive the Holy Communion.
Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let them speak, please. Okay. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand closing him together. Let's stand to join together in a closing hymn. There's the song in the air. There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry, and the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing, for the manger of Bethlehem cradles our king. There's a tumult of joy or the wonderful Virgin, sweet boy, is the Lord of the earth. By the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing. For the manger of Bethlehem cradles our King. In the light of the star, like the angels in pearl, and the song from afar has swept over the world. Every heart is a flame and the beautiful sing In the homes of the nations that Jesus is King Thank you, Vice. Thank you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, go in peace, remembering that we have a signal to the world which God has sent to each and one of us. When we think it's over, no, it's not yet over. God has something new. God has something great in us and for us and for the world. May the peace and grace of the Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit fill us and guide us this day and forevermore. Amen. As we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throng, I will shout to the lovely evangel they bring, and we greet in his cradle our Savior and King.